Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So we are going to wait just three or four minutes for the rest of the students to join the class, okay? Okay, hello everybody, welcome to the class. It's nice to see you again. So uh, today I send you a little link for you to check about the relative clauses so you understand a little bit better. But of course, if you have questions, uh, I can send you another article tomorrow and some exercises. So that was an explanation in Spanish for you to, to check into that one. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, we're going to start tonight speaking a little bit more about leadership. So uh, I want you to think what makes a good leader? What characteristics a good leader has to have? So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to think about that. What, what are the characteristics that good leaders have to have so you can share with the class, okay? So if you have questions, I will be here.
Okay, have you finished already or do you need more time? Okay, I guess you're ready. Who wants to share? What are the characteristics that a good leader has to have? What do you think? I think ability to influence other people, communication, emotional intelligence, integrity. Okay, very good. Interesting, all the characteristics that you have said. And definitely, you need to, when you're a leader, you need to influence in a positive way to other people, right? And you mentioned something that is also very, very important integrity right because when you are it doesn't matter if you are part of a company or any kind of project you have to have values and those values have to have to reflect on the actions that you do and on the influence that you have in other very good perfect thank you and any other person wants to share what you think creativity about too, creativity, motivation. Okay, yeah, motivation is another important part, right? Uh, a question about that one. How how do you get motivated? If I'm imagine that you are not happy, you are kind of struggling with something. What things motivate you? What can you tell me about that? So do you think, uh, I mean, for some people, money is very important. For other people, it's like only to say, have a good job or anything like that. So uh, that will be things that motivate. For example, for me, uh, the important, what is very important at work is that my boss come and tell me, you did a very good job. So that for me is, is more important than money. But for other people, it's different. So. What do you think are some things that can motivate people or what motivates you? I think teacher, the environment in the work motivates you because you you have a, a good team, you can work you can do your work better. But if your co-workers are not um are not good person with you, you can you can work better so I think this is a part important in in to be motivated so also the communication with the leader I think and obviously your salary <laughs> is an important part definitely you are so right I mean money is very important right actually that is one of the main the main reasons why let's say why a uh, person wants to change a job, right? Salary is very important and also the environment, definitely. I believe that actually you mentioned the most important, the three most important, because if the environment is good, uh, yeah, you are happy there. And even if they offer you more money, sometimes you say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go away. I'm going to stay here. So that uh, is something important and also the, relationship with your uh with your boss right because when uh, when you have a good communication when the relationship with your boss is a very good one uh, definitely you feel you feel that they are listening to you or uh, many other things so that is uh important yeah, and also the feedback that you receive from your boss or, or your co-worker, it's important to 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 keep motivated in in your work.
any other characteristics that you want to share, let's say for leadership? The leader no. has to be patient, I think. Oh, that the, is the the attitude of the all the people is different. So you have to to learn how to to keep to treat with the different kind of attitudes on the people. Very good. So that is very true. Uh, and it's not easy, right? Uh, definitely that is not easy at all. Because uh, be patient, I mean, is something. Uh, I mean, sometimes we have our character, right? And we want things to be done a certain way. People, they don't do things. Uh, we don't understand. So there are many things that can check. It out. Very good. So this is the introduction for the topic of tonight. Before we move on, uh, we're going to check the attendance, of course. Because I believe that almost everybody's here. Okay, so Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Present teacher. Okay, good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. José Alberto Baños Hernández. Present. Good. Cara Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Nathalie Juárez de Ramírez. Muy bien. Hasta los seis meses. Present. Nice. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Errodas Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Zulma Janet Ramírez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Present teacher. Good. Perfect. I guess I check on everybody. Check. Good. Okay. And uh, about the platform, how is everything going with the platform? Everything is fine. Do you have any questions about that one? You should be doing tonight the homework one. Point nine. That is a multiple option, so you shouldn't be having problems with that one. But in case you have problems, just let me know, and of course I will help you with that. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna start with a video, as usual with the videos. I check the pronunciation, vocabulary, and of course I check the uh, uh, what is the video about, so you can comment and give opinion at the end. So here we go with the video. There's a man by the name of Captain William Swenson who recently was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions on September 8, 2009. On that day, a column of American and Afghan troops were making their way through a part of Afghanistan to help protect a group of government officials, a group of Af Afghan government officials who'd be meeting with some local 
village elders. The column came under ambush and was surrounded on three sides. And amongst many other things, Captain Swenson was recognized for running into live fire to rescue the wounded and pull out the dead. One of the people he rescued was a sergeant, and he and a comrade were making their way to a medevac helicopter. And what was remarkable about this day is, by sheer coincidence, one of the medevac medics happened to have a GoPro camera on his helmet, and captured the whole scene on camera. It shows Captain Swenson and his comrade bringing this wounded soldier who received a gunshot to the neck. They put him in the helicopter, and then you see Captain Swenson bend over and give him a kiss before he turns around to rescue more. I saw this, and I thought to myself, "Where do people like that come from? What is that? That is some deep, deep emotion when you would want to do that. There's a, there's a, there's a love there, and I want to know why is it that." I don't have people that I work with like that. You know, in the military, they give medals to people who are willing to sacrifice themselves so that others may gain. In business, we give bonuses to people who are willing to sacrifice others so that we may gain. Yeah, back, right? So I asked myself, where do people like this come from? And my initial conclusion was that they're just better people. That's why they're attracted to the military. These better people are attracted to this concept of service. But that's completely wrong. What I learned is that it's the environment, and if you get the environment right, every single one of us has the capacity to do these remarkable things, and more importantly, others have that capacity too. I've had the great honor of getting to meet some of these who we would call heroes, who've put themselves and put their lives at risk to save others, and I ask them, "Why would you do it? Why did you do it?" And they all say the same thing. Because they would have done it for me, it's this deep sense of trust and cooperation. So trust and cooperation are really important here. The problem with concepts of trust and cooperation is that they are feelings; they're not instructions. I can't simply say to you, "Trust me," and you will. I can't simply instruct two people to cooperate, and they will. It's not how it works. It's a feeling. So where does that feeling come from? If you go back 50,000 years to the Paleolithic era, to the early days of Homo sapien. What we find is that the world was filled with danger. All of these forces working very, very hard to kill us. Nothing personal. Whether it was the weather, lack of resources, maybe a saber-toothed tiger, all of these things working to reduce our lifespan. And so we evolved into social animals, where we live together and work together in what I call a circle of safety, inside the tribe, where we felt like we belong. And when we felt safe amongst our own, the natural reaction was trust and cooperation. There are inherent benefits to this. It means I can fall asleep at night and trust that someone from within my tribe will watch for danger. If we don't trust each other, if I don't trust you, that means you won't watch for danger. Bad system of survival. The modern day is exactly the same thing. The world is filled with danger, things that are trying to frustrate our lives or reduce our success, reduce our opportunity for success. It could be the ups and downs of an economy. The uncertainty of the stock market. It could be a new technology that renders your business model obsolete overnight, or it could be your competition that is sometimes trying to kill you. It's sometimes trying to put you out of business, but at the very minimum, is working hard to frustrate your growth, steal your business from you. We have no control over these forces. These are a constant, and they're not going away. The only variable are the conditions inside the organization, and that's where leadership matters. Because it's the leader that sets the tone. When a leader makes the choice to put the safety and lives of the people inside the organization first, to sacrifice their comforts and sacrifice the tangible results so that the people remain and feel safe and feel like they belong, remarkable things happen. I was flying on a trip, and I was witness to an incident where a passenger attempted to board before their number was called. And I watched the gate agent treat this man like he had broken the law, like a criminal. He was yelled at for attempting to board one group too soon. So I said something. I said, "Why? Why do you have to treat us like cattle? Why can't you treat us like human beings?" 
And this is exactly what she said to me. She said, "Sir, if I don't follow the rules, I could get in trouble or lose my job." All she was telling me is that she doesn't feel safe. All she was telling me is that she doesn't trust her leaders. The reason we like flying Southwest Airlines is not because they necessarily hire better people; it's because they don't fear their leaders. You see, if the conditions are wrong, we are forced to expend our own time and energy to protect ourselves from each other. And that inherently weakens the organization. When we feel safe inside the organization, we will naturally combine our talents and our strengths and work tirelessly to face the dangers outside and seize the opportunities. The closest analogy I can give to what a great leader is is like being a parent. If you think about what being a great parent is, what do you want? What makes a great parent? We want to give our child opportunities, education, discipline them when necessary, all so that they can grow up and achieve more than we could for ourselves. Great leaders want exactly the same thing. They want to provide their people opportunity, education, discipline when necessary, build their self-confidence, give them the opportunity to try and fail, all so that they could achieve more than we could ever imagine for ourselves. Charlie Kim, who's the CEO of a company called Next Jump, in New York City, a tech company, he makes the point that if you had hard times in your family, would you ever consider laying off one of your children? We would never do it. Then why do we consider laying off people inside our organization? Charlie implemented a policy of lifetime employment. If you get a job at Next Jump, you cannot get fired for performance issues. In fact, if you have issues, they will coach you and they will give you support, just like we would with one of our children who happens to come home with a C from school. It's the complete opposite. This is the reason so many people have such a visceral. Hatred, discon, sort of anger at some of these banking CEOs with their disproportionate salaries and bonus structures. It's not the numbers; it's that they have violated the very definition of leadership. They have violated this deep-seated social contract. We know that they allowed their people to be sacrificed so that they could protect their own interests, or worse, they sacrificed their people to protect their own interests. This is what so offends us: not the numbers. Would anybody be offended if we gave a 150 million dollar bonus to Gandhi? How about a 250 million dollar bonus to Mother Teresa? Do we have an issue with that? None at all. None at all. Great leaders would never sacrifice the people to save the numbers. They would sooner sacrifice the numbers to save the people. Bob Chapman, who runs a large manufacturing company in the Midwest called Barry Waymiller, in 2008, he was hit very hard by the Recession, and they lost 30 percent of their orders overnight. Now, in a large manufacturing company, this is a this is a big deal, and they could no longer afford their la their labor pool. They needed to save 10 million dollars. So, like so many companies today, the board got together and discussed layoffs. And Bob refused. You see, Bob doesn't believe in head counts. Bob believes in heart counts, and it's much more difficult to simply reduce. The heart count, and so they came up with a furlough program. Every employee, from secretary to CEO, was required to take four weeks of unpaid vacation. They could take it any time they wanted, and they did not have to take it consecutively. But it was how Bob announced the program that mattered so much. He said, "It's better that we should all suffer a little than any of us should have to suffer a lot," and morale went up. They saved twenty million dollars. And most importantly, as would be expected, when the people feel safe and protected by the leadership in the organization, the natural reaction is to trust and cooperate. And quite spontaneously, nobody expected, people started trading with each other. Those who could afford it more would trade with those who could afford it less. People would take five weeks, so that somebody else only had to take three. Leadership is a choice; it is not a rank. I know many people at the senior most levels of organizations who are absolutely not leaders. They are authorities, and we do what they say because they have authority over us. But we would not follow them. And I know many people who are at the bottoms of organizations who have no authority, and they are absolutely leaders. And this is because they have chosen to look after the person to the left of them, and they have chosen to look after the person to the right of them. This is what a leader is. I heard a story of some Marines who were out in theater, and as is the Marine custom, 
the officer ate last, and he let his men eat first. And when they were done, there was no food left for him. And when they went back out in the field, his men brought him some of their food, so that he may eat. Because that's what happens. We call them leaders because they go first. We call them leaders because they take the risk before anybody else does. We call them leaders because they will choose to sacrifice so that their people may be safe and protected, and so his, their people may gain. And when we do, the natural response is that our people will sacrifice for us. They will give us their blood and sweat and tears to see that their leader's vision comes to life. And when we ask them, "Why would you do that? Why would you give your blood and sweat and tears for that person?" they all say the same thing. Because they would have done it for me, and isn't that the organization we would all like to work in? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my friends. So, comments, opinions about the video. I think the, the first the first thing is the trust. If the leader creates a, a an environment that exists trust in each other, and they can improve the the work and do the things better, I think when the employees feels and um, safe, they they do the things in a better way. Very good. Yeah, trust. Trust is a very important part of any relationship. Remember that jobs have relationships, right? From the employees to the employers to the owners and to the customers. So trust is a very important part of any relationship. Any other comments or opinion on the video? In our company, teacher, a lot of time uh, the people uh, want be a a boss. B O S S. I don't know if good if they good boss boss a boss uh -huh. a boss uh huh but not leader. Is 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 most is easier be a a, a boss because you, because uh, I I can say uh, do that. If you do don't if you don't do <laughs> don't make uh, can you fire or can you fire no and uh, they can get fired yeah uh huh fire but the leader is different because uh, they they think uh, what what do you don't make the the work why what what is your problem how the company or or me can help you for for make better your work is the difference but in our company is um particular is is com common common uh, common yeah. common be a boss but not a leader it's very difficult it's very very um hard be a leader because it's like i say the video video um it's, it's necessary to make a sacrifice for the people. And sometimes, no, I can't make sacrifice for the people if the people don't make for me. Uh, but uh, I, it's necessary, the leader, um, it's necessary to take the first, the first um, step, the first step for, for make the difference. Definitely. So, yeah, you say uh, a lot of things important and definitely uh, a good leader makes sacrifices. I really like the story that he uh, say at the end, right? I mean, sometimes companies, they have crisis because of many reasons, right? And you decide, you decide what you are going to do in the crisis. The most, the, the easiest, 
solution is to fire people, right? To uh, to sell some assets, things like that one. That is the issue, and that is what most of the companies do. But the company that he was telling us about, he, I mean, the bus, he came with a very nice idea. I mean, everybody's going to take five weeks of vacation, no payments, so everybody continue with their jobs. And of course, the people, the employees, they say, yeah, I want to continue working here. I want to do sacrifices for my company. Maybe in the future, if they say, you have to stay late tonight. They say, yes, of course, we're going to stay. So uh, it's a relationship, right? It's like with your family, with your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband. It's the same way. Problem is that, as you say, some companies, some leaders are bosses. They just got a position because of many reasons, and they uh, are not able to to do what they have to do. Right. Good. Any other comments on the video? I I um. I put attention with the uh, with when he talk about security, confidence, and and how to to transmit it. That that things that feel, and when you, uh, when you, or when when you when you feel protect by the company by the leadership uh, the the most common reaction is to cooperate to cooperate and and when he makes a, a, a difference between leaders and and authorities i have here um a difference between both and leader but no both uh, or leader and, and, and authorities is, is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, I believe that whenever we have boss or anything like that, uh, we see them as an authority. Right? You have to do this. Sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes mm -hmm. they are right, uh, but we don't know the reasons why we need to do something. So that is also part of the leader to explain, we need to do this because of this and this, and so we can achieve these other things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's different, definitely. I mean, a leader, uh, the, the story about the, the Marines also was very interesting. I mean, that is something that they do in the US. Uh, if you are the boss, you are the one who eats at last. And also, if it's danger, if there is danger, the boss, I mean, the, uh, the official is the one that goes first. So that's the way it should be, right? But I mean, modern world, it doesn't work like that sometimes. So it shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it is. Any other comments or opinions on the video? Yes, in my case, teacher, I just reminder um, Hitler and Nelson Mandela. They were, they were leader actually in the, um, if I'm not wrong, a lot of people died for Hitler, actually, but for Nelson Mandela, nobody dies. So I don't know if it is correct to say it, but in our history, in this line of the history, Hitler was uh, was the bad guy of the history, actually. But in German, he was a leader, a huge leader. Maybe in the wrong way, but if everybody wants to die for him, if everybody wants to be his wife, or everybody wants to be the mother of his uh, of his child, his children, sorry, uh, I think he was a really good leader. Maybe with the wrong ideas, but he was. In Nelson Mandela's case, if I'm not wrong with history, um, Actually, he was a good a good leader, but not everybody wants to die for him. Just to follow him and come and search the uh, his ideas. That that's what I think, and it's pretty interesting to see actually the military leadership because that that's correct. If the 
if the word is very heavy, first is the captain. I don't know how to say it in English. Captain. Captain. Captain mm -hmm. is first on the line, and then another the soldier. So that's correct. If you want to be in leadership, you has to be the first one to put. Actually, to put the face actually <laughs> to grow <laughs> up with the team. Yeah, very good, very good analysis. Actually, uh, I totally agree. Hitler, I believe that still nowadays, there are people that they are admire people, not because of the actions that he made, but because he uh, he was a, a very good leader. He had very good organization. He uh, invested money in uh, researching, I mean, they did a, a, a huge plan. The plan was very efficient and they were very, very close. I believe that they are the ones that are the closest to to rule the world, like in the movies, right? You believe that that happens only in movies, but if they if they uh, were able to get into, into England, for example, I mean, the world would be different right now. But uh, the actions that he pursued, it was not good, right? Uh, it's because in Germany, there was a crisis at the time and yeah. nobody came with answers, with really answers. And since there was a crisis and everybody was desperate, he took advantage of that. So yeah, and that happens. Uh, and that happens in companies. You can see that there are companies that suddenly, uh, I mean, the company says that they are in bankruptcy, no money at all. Because the leaders, they spend the money. They they didn't take the right decisions. And they are very smart. They are good leaders, but they took wrong decisions. And at the end, that has consequences, not only for them. That is the problem with the leaders. The consequences that you have are also for the people that follow you, right? It doesn't matter if you are a military or if you are the manager of Interesting, interesting debate. These uh, these videos from Ted are ones of the very popular, very nice. I I, I really like to print this uh, these videos to the classes because there are many many topics. If you want to give it a shot, you can go to their uh, YouTube channel. You will find a lot of topics, very nice topics. Uh, so you can also practice English. So that is a very good thing. Okay, so we're going to continue with the class and this is it. This is the, the topic of tonight, as we said. So what is leadership? That is the first question. Can Lorena, could you please help me reading this one? Yes. What is, what is leadership? Leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of people to influence and lead followers and or members of or of an organization, society, or team. Leadership often is an attribute tied to a person's a person's I don't know how pronunciation person title or title. Yeah. Thank you. Title, seniority, or ranking in a hierarchy. However, no. it is. Yeah, that is hierarchy. Oh? Hierarchy. Hierarchy. However, it's an attribute anyone can have or attain, even those without leadership position. It's a developable scale that can be improved over time. Very good. In your own words, what did you understand here? Uh, the, in, I think the leadership uh, have to be the abilities uh, to can uh, that you can influence the people um, group um, um, or guide the, 
the employees of the organizations uh, or team. Uh, Mm, only okay very good so that is it uh, it says leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of people so that is important it's not only just one person it can be a group right to influence and that is something that you mentioned on the uh, class earlier to influence and guide so two things are very important followers or members of an organization, society, or team. So, uh, yeah, it can be, you can be a leader for many things. A leadership often is an attribute tied. Uh, here is the first question. What is tied? Tied is like linked, that is attached, okay? So that is tied. Uh, so tied to a person's title. So that's, for example, when you are the boss, the manager, the CEO, right? The chair officer, the executive officer. Uh, seniority or seniority means that you are uh, tenure in a position, tenure in the company. You are the one who knows more because you have been working in the company for 20 years. Or ranking in hierarchy. So meaning that you are, so since there is an organigram, right? You are the one on top. However, it's an attribute anyone can have or attain. Even those with a leadership positions, it's a developable skill that can be improved over time. And that is true. So yes, you can be a leader, but you can be a better leader tomorrow, in a month, in a year, if you develop some skills. Do you have any questions in this uh, slide? What is uh, hierarchy? Hierarchy is like in Spanish. I mean, it's like uh, when you have a hierarchy, it's like in a, an organigram. When yes, you have yes. A, you, I you know. Got okay. okay, very good. Any other question? Okay, so let's check. Uh, the next one is for Jose Alberto Baños. Okay, uh, leaders are found and required in most aspects of society, including business, politics, uh, religion, and social and community-based organizations. Leaders are seen as people who make sound and sometimes difficult decisions. They articulate a clear vision establish a capable goals and provide followers with the knowledge and tools necessary to achieve, achieve. those goals. A achieve. Okay, achieve those goals. An effective leader, an effective leader has the following characteristics: self-confidence, strong communication, and management skills, creative and innovative thinking perseverance, willingness to take risk, and uh, open to change, level header, and your activeness in times of crisis. Oh, or crisis. Crisis. Yes. crisis. Okay, what did you get from this uh, paragraph? Okay. Um, I, I think is uh, when when talk about the leaders, uh, the leaders is necessary in in many aspects. Uh, they talk about society, religion. Uh, the church needs a, a leader. The the society needs a leaders for. Uh, fight for the, the the rights or or something like that the politics and and in 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 all place in all, all uh, you need uh, a leader the leader is is uh, the the guy 
for the for the people and the characteristics uh, for a, an effective leader uh, they talk about the self confidence is very important because uh, you transmit the 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 security for the other people uh, a strong communication you must be clear when you talk about the goals of the organization or the the uh, the company and and create creative because uh, you need to transmit the ideas for uh, for the success in the in the in in the in the company or or in the society when when you are a uh, work like a leader when it goes to definitely that is it i mean as you say we need leaders everywhere right uh, in the community uh, uh in the company uh, uh even on the street, sometimes you need to. I mean, mind that there is today that there was a tremor, an earthquake, a little earthquake. So if you see that things are falling, you need to say, everybody, please be quiet and be, let's run this way or something like that, right? So that is totally, totally true. So let's check even about in, even when when you are in 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 a in an accident, uh, you need a leader for for reaction to the to the. Uh, the, the problem exactly so uh, in emergency i mean i believe in crisis and in emergencies when you really see the leaders right because in the video uh, uh actually it says that one that some people they have in, uh, in in positions in the hierarchy very top but they are not leaders and the opposite sometimes there are leaders that are not on the top they are just in, in the common but in moments of crisis and emergencies where you really see the true leaders, right? There you, you see who is the real leader there. Okay, it says leaders are found and required in most aspects of society, including business, politics, religion, and social and community-based organizations. Leaders are seen as people who make sound and sometimes difficult decisions. They articulate a clear vision, establish achievable goals, and provide followers with the knowledge and tools necessary to achieve those goals. Achieve. Do you remember what is achieve, everybody? Okay. Achieve is when you have an objective and you reach the objective. That is to achieve. And then it says an effective leader has the following characteristics. And yeah, they are very, very important. Self-confidence. Yeah, you need to know that you know, right? You need to be sure what you are going to do, what you're going to do. Strong communications, definitely. If you have an idea, you have a plan, you have to be able to communicate that to other people. Management skills, definitely, right? So to make decisions, uh, not only any decision, but the right decisions. Creative, definitely, right? Sometimes there are problems. The managers are there to solve problems. Innovative thinking, yeah. You need to move forward on that one. Perseverance, of course. Willingness to take risks. Uh, willingness, what is willingness? Anybody knows? Okay, uh, this is kind of difficult to explain. Willingness, uh, when you are willing to do something, is because uh, maybe you don't like the idea, but you can do it. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm willing to do it. Even when the activity or the task is not that that pretty, right? And take risks. What is a risk? Anybody? The consequence for a decision, uh, uh, some decision. Very good. So yeah, sometimes, I mean, you you analyze a lot of information, but you don't know if the decision that you are going to take is the best decision. 
So you analyze and then you take a risk. I don't know. I'm not sure 100% this is going to work. But I believe that the best option, the best decision is this one, the one that I'm going to say. Open to change. This also has to be for leaders. You need to listen to everybody. So if the change comes, you need to embrace. Level-headed. Do you know what is level-headed? It's very hot, the phone. Ah, it's because of the internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, level-headed is something like when you, when you make a plan, you don't think only in the beginning of the plan. You think in all the levels of the plan. I'm going to start here and then move here, and then we're going to finish in this point. So, like a map for something. Reactiveness in time of crisis. This is one of the most important, right? If there is a crisis, you need to, to take the leadership and go and do things. So, definitely. Uh, do you have any question on pronunciation or vocabulary here in this part? No. What are you on level level headed? Level headed. Yeah, level headed is when you plan something in different levels. So not only in the short term, but in the long term. And you know uh, everything that you have to do for this plan. Any other question? Okay. Let's move to the next one. Why is leadership important? Uh, let's see. Um, Nelson Antonio Rodas. Okay. Why is leadership important? Leadership plays a central role in the success and direction of a business. Organization depends on successful leaders to communicate its mission, visions, and goals. You need team members around those goals and then achieve them. These capabilities are especially important in times of crisis. Okay, in your own words, what did you understand? Okay, I think Always is a, are are talking about leadership in a in the business. Are talking about the that that depends of the depend of the leader. Is the it depends of, of the of the vision in and goals of the of the business. Okay. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. If the team are the, the team are it, the business uh to get a, a good a good vision for the and capabilities. Okay, very good. So that is it. I mean, leadership is important because of many things. Leadership plays a central role in the success and direction of a business. Organizations depend on successful leaders to communicate its mission, vision, and goals, unite team members around those goals, and then achieve them. These capabilities are especially important in times of crisis. So, uh, yeah, it's because of everything. Right? The leader is in every step of the road when we want to achieve goals for the company. So definitely is one of the most important parts of the company. Any questions on this paragraph? No questions. No. Okay, uh, go ahead, sir. No, 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 teacher. No question. Okay, very good. So the next one is going to be for, let's see. Fatima, Denise. Okay. 
Hard decision making is often required for the success and evolution of a business. Businesses. Businesses often depend on leaders with high competences and emotional intelligence to make through decisions and solve problems. This level of trust and success often leads to positive, productive work environments that encourage teamwork, employee well-being, and a strong work culture that are attractive to top talent. A strong leadership is critical to an organization's competitiveness because it drives change and innovation. The best leaders keep an eye on changing direction in their industry, promote new ideas from between their company and bring in innovative thinkers. Very good. So, uh, on your own words, what did you get from this paradigm? Um, talk about the important how uh, leaderships with a vision for for um, change. A innovative and resolve problems and leaderships who dele delegate and choose a great team work for for do a, a job and have productive and and be attractive to top talent. Okay. So yes, these are like more reasons why it's important to have a uh, a leadership, good leadership, right? So it says hard decision making is often required for the success and evolution of a business. It's time to wake up. <laughs> okay, so hard decision making, what is that? Uh, do you have an idea how you explain hard decision making? Is is when to to take a a decision, but really really hard. Yes, yeah, so uh, go ahead. No, okay. yes. So, yes, this uh, sometimes uh, as individual that we uh, check, sometimes you need to you need to do something to save the company, but it's hard. I mean, sometimes uh, I believe that for everybody that we have been uh, in managerial uh, positions, uh, it's difficult to when we have to fire maybe uh, there are reasons of productivity but it's difficult anyways sometimes to make some a decision businesses often depend on leaders with high competencies and emotional intelligence to make tough decisions and solve problems what is emotional intelligence And when you have the ability to think before uh, do something and uh, you are thinking before uh, say anything. Yeah, that reflects on the on the feelings of the people, right? On the way that you interact with other people. Uh, yeah, I mean, you are not going to treat everybody the same because we are talking. And this is to make tough decisions. What is tough? It's like, like hard. Mm -hmm. 
very good. It's something difficult, right, that you have to do. So that is it. And solve problems. This level of trust and success often leads to positive, productive work environments that encourage teamwork. What is teamwork, my friends? Many, many people in the in the department, in the case, the company. Or oh, well, oh, well, production, yeah. accountant, something like that. Okay. Okay, so that is teamwork. I mean, when you work with other people, right? when you are good uh, by getting together and achieve things. Employee well-being and strong work cultures that are attractive to top talent. Well-being is like being well, right? Something like that. To be good in a situation. And strong work, you know what it's like. And then it says strong leadership is critical to an organization's competitiveness because it drives change and innovation. The best leaders keep an eye on changing directions in their industry, promote new ideas from within their company, and bring innovative thinkers. I don't see any new word, but do you have any questions here this, in this one? How is, next... What is the pronunciation? Competitiveness. Like competitiveness. That. Competitiveness. Competitiveness, yeah. Teacher, it was many hard in, in, the, first, in the first sentence. Uh, hard decision yeah. making. Uh, What's many? Make... In, in the, in the, yeah, in the, in the, in the. a hard decision making is when you have to make a decision that is difficult. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so let's move to the next one. Leadership theory. Ah, this is uh this is going to be for let's see Daniel Archimedes. Okay. Leadership theory. How people become leader and what makes a great leader have been the subject of study for centuries. The ideas century was dominated by the great man theory, which stresses that leadership is a unique natural skill and that the great leaders are born to the task. Lists of terms and nation, national leadership tries. Transnational leadership is one approach to lead, leading people. Leading people. Are some, leading people. The following are some of the many leadership theory advanced in the 20th century. Pay your own words, what did you understand here? Mm. Okay. There are commercials tonight. <laughs> I for me it's not clear the idea about the leadership theory really. Yeah, but actually, I, they, go ahead. They they are talking about the century of nineties, but uh, they are talking in this paragraph. Talk about the, I don't know really. I I, I don't understand. It's not clear for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. This is not just the introduction. What it says here is that there are many leadership theories. So there are like traits leadership. Uh, and we are going to present some of those. And this happened because uh, there was, well, there are two theories. In the 19th century, uh, the great man theory, it was the one that it was checked. But now the approach is different in the 20th century. So those are the ones that we're going to check. And uh, let's read about that one to check pronunciation. Uh, leadership theory. How people become leaders and what makes a great leader have been 
the subject of study for centuries. Uh, become, what is to become, my friends? When the people is changed in uh, for improved person, I don't know. Very good. It's like a transformational thing. Nice. And then it says the 19th century was dominated by the great man theory, which stressed that leadership is a unique natural skill and that great leaders are born to task. Uh, when it says that it's born to the task, it means that, uh, well, this is part of the debate of leadership. So some people believe that you are born a leader, that you cannot learn to be a leader. And other people believe that you, you can learn to be a leader if you develop some skills. So born to this task means that you are born like that. You are a leader, natural leader, somewhere. Natural leader, you was born with this skill. You don't Excellent. need to study about that. Something like that, that is the approach of that, so. And then it says, listen, transactional leadership traits. Transactional leadership is one approach to leading people. And then is the introduction for them, the rest. So uh, anybody has a question on this part at all? What is traits? Traits. The way that you uh, manage people. Okay. How you treat them. Uh, any other questions? Okay, let's check the next one. This is the first part of the introduction of the theory. So this is going to be for David Alexander Rodriguez. Okay, teacher. The first uh, paragraph. The two paragraphs, all the things. Okay. Try to relate to the mind. Myth. Myth. 20th century, century and it centered on the idea that some people are born with certain personality tra traits that make them great leaders such as in in theory and self confidence good Let's Sit uh, situation okay Situational leadership is where the leadership style is adjusted based on the rightness or skill level of flowers in a given, given situation. Okay, what did you understand on this one? Uh, open the door. It's very hot. It's hot? Yeah, I believe it's hot. Maybe I can open the door. Okay, so yes, this is like the introduction again, right? Three theory dates to the mid 20th century and it centers in the idea that some people are born with certain personal traits that made them great leaders such as integrity and self-confidence. And the first question here is mid, mid 20th century. What is mid? It's like um, median, what was it? Mid that is? In the, yeah, half. That is in the half of the century. Very good, very nice. Okay. Uh, let me see, there's no other here, certain personality traits, uh, that is it, self-confidence, you know what is that one. And then it says situational leadership is, and this is the first one, situational leadership, is where the leadership style is adjusted based on the readiness uh, or skill level of followers in a given situation. So the meaning of this one is that you, you adapt yourself to different situations. So sometimes you are going to be very strict. Sometimes you are going to be very friendly, things like that. One. So depending on the situation, you adapt. So that is a situational leadership. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions here in this in this paragraph? What is trait, teacher? Trait is the way that you manage people, the way that you treat people. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And, you, and how do you pronounce 20th? This is the right pronunciation. Yeah, you can say 20th or 20th. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Okay. So let's check to the next one. That is going to be four. There are two other uh, kinds of leadership uh, theories. Uh, so this one is going to be for Holman Saul. So it's not possible to hold that. Okay, let's check then. Oswin Alexis. Contingency theory posit that effective leadership depends on having the right leader for the right situation. Transactional leadership is an approach, approach. Word, approach where leader rewards or punish forward to achieve results. Okay, your own words, what did you understand on this one? Hmm. Any idea on your own words? I, I don't have idea. Teacher. Okay, it's very easy. So there are two theories here. The, the first one says contingency, contingency theory. So that is that post, I mean, that expresses that theory that effective leadership depends on having the right leader for the right situations. So uh, depending on the, for example, on the department where you need a leader, uh, sometimes you need somebody that is very analytical, or sometimes you need a leader that is uh, people, people uh, leading. So uh, you need to analyze what is the right person for each position. So that is the first one, contingency. And actually contingency is when you, uh, when you handle different situations, right? The other one says transactional leadership. It's an approach where leaders reward or punish followers to achieve results. This is an interesting because I believe in El Salvador, uh, this is the most common. A transactional leadership is the one that if you do a very good job, they go and give you food, they give you things. Uh, if you do something bad, they come and say, you, you are not going to have vacations. You are not going to have uh, this that you had before. So this is the transactional leadership, the one that uh, gives you a reward. Do you know what is a reward, anybody? It's like to give like a gift to something. I think. Very good. It's like a prize, something that you earn with your job. And punish is the opposite. Punish is when you... Um, for example, when you kid, for example, kids here in Salvador, when your kid uh, makes something bad, you punish. You say, no television for you. So that is the punishment. So transactional leaderships are the one that gives you gifts or presents or punish you. So they tell you, you don't have this benefit anymore. Uh, do you have any question on this part? No. Positive is like position. Uh, which one? I'm sorry. Positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like expresses, expresses. In this case, it's something like that. Positive is like expressing something. Okay. Let's move on. This one is going to be for uh, Manuel Escamilla.
not possible. Uh, Carlo Lorena, Leiva. Transformational leadership is where leaders appeal to followers, values and emotion to transform the way they think and approach their work, their work or life. Behaviorist theory encompasses the person leadership skills are developed and training as product or the environment. Okay, what did you get from those, uh, these two theories? We talk uh, about the, the leadership transformational, uh, how to evaluate uh, the emotion and, and to transform the way they see the, the, the people in their life or in their world. Okay. So this is very interesting, actually. Uh, I really like this one. Transformational leadership is where leaders appeal to followers' values and emotions to transform the way they think and approach their world or life. So appeal. Yeah. What is to appeal? Mm -hmm. Would be like defend or something like. That. Uh, it's like appeal is when you try to convince somebody according to the values. Something like that is appealing. So to try to 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 understand the other person, so to know who to motivate. Them. So in this case, that is the transformation of leadership. So they try to understand the people, and so they can transform the way they think, they transform their attitude you know, so they can achieve all the goals at work or in life. And the other one says behaviorist. Theory encompasses a person's leadership skills are developed and trained as products of their environment. So encompasses is like um, guide a person, right? So try to get the best of and well, uh, the behaviorist then says that the leader skills are going to come on the experience that they have. So if the person is gaining experiences in different things, they are going to become a good leader. So that is like the basic what what it wants to say. Do you have any questions on this? Uh, words, vocabulary, pronunciation. Okay, the next one is going to be for, let's see, Herman Alexander. Yes, teacher. Uh, is it possible for you to read? Yes. Uh, behavioral mm -hmm. is where a leader models certain behaviors. Setting a good example for others to follow. Functional theory is leadership based on collection of people's behaviors and group dynamics. Individuals. Goal theory is where leaders set goals and smooth the to those goals to motivate and drive performance. Perform. Okay, so there are three here. So what did you understand on these three traits of leadership? Um, and number two. So that is the one that you like the best? And yes, I think. Okay. Yeah, let's check into those. Behavioral theory is where a leader models certain behaviors, setting a good example for others to follow. So, of course, the key word here is behavior. What is behavior, my friends? 
is the way the person acts. Perfect, very good. That is a behavior, the way the people act. And so uh, in this one, the leader is trying to, to change the behavior of some people, right? The next one says functional theory. This leadership based on a collection of people's behaviors and group dynamics, not in groups. I believe this is very uh, easy to understand. So it's not going to focus on the individual, but in the group itself, how everybody uh, in the department, for example, behave. And the last one says path goal theory is where leaders set goals and smooth the path to those goals to motivate and drive performance. What is path? That is the first question. I think path is like a, a way to follow. Very good. It's exactly like that. Path is like a, a, a way, a, a, a little, yeah, way where you can go. So this is what these leaders do. They they try to help you uh, to achieve the goals, to motivate. That's why it says drive performance, because you they motivate you on the KPIs, on the activities that you do. Uh, do you have any questions on any of this, any word uh, or pronunciation? Okay, so, uh, okay, this is interesting. Leadership versus management. What is the difference? Uh, Erica, Jasmine, could you please help me with it? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it says leadership versus management. The terms leaderships and management are used interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> interchangeable. Interchangeable. Okay, interchangeable, but they are in the same concept. Leadership roles involve crea a creative and articulating a vision and inspiring others to want to work toward that vision. But leaders might not be skilled at. Uh, pardon, I'm sorry. Uh, but leaders might not be a be a skilled at or involved with the day-to-day -day management of the work needed to turn that vision into reality. <clears throat> management is the oversight of the tactical step required to complete the work and ach achieve the the objective. Good managers excel at articulating the step required to complete tasks and holding people accountable for doing assigned work. Leaders can be good managers and good managers can be a good leader. Very often, managers are put into position where they need to exhi exhibit leadership characteristics such as motivating and aligning employees to goals like 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 I'm sorry what likewise likewise yeah likewise likewise leaders often must take on management tasks such as holding employees accountable for organizations goals and vision okay <laughs> very good so uh in your own words what do you get from this they are kind of, kind of the same, but leadership is actually a, the person who inspired to to employees to continue growing with the skills or maybe uh, change the vision to actually it actually says turn that vision into a real, reality and complete or to to get the goals actually. Managers I ca are kind of the same, but they are more like more like um how to explain it um maybe not it's it's kind of the same, but manager is more like I don't know 
Okay. Like, huh? yeah, it's kind of the same, but it's, <laughs> it's just the difference for me. It's one of them. It's a little bit more close to the employees and manager. It's, yeah, it's close to the employees, but it looks more for the goals and the numbers and and the profit of the 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 the, the, the business, I think. Very good. Actually, that is it. I mean, it is kind of related, right? Uh, I believe, in my personal opinion, that management has to be part of leadership. So if you are a good leader, you have to have management skills. Let's check what it says. The terms leadership and management are used interchangeably. So, so yes, people use it one or the other one, but it says they aren't the same concept. So they are not the same. They are similar, but not the same. So leadership roles involve creating and articulating a vision and inspiring others. So this is very important. So when you are a leader, you are focused on the vision, on everything that you want to accomplish, not only the company, but all the employees, you and all the people. Inspiring is a very strong word. Not everyone can inspire, right? Uh, want to work toward that vision system. But leaders might not be skilled at or involved with the day-to-day -day management of the world needed to turn that vision into reality. So that means that, yeah, you can be a good leader, but maybe you're not a good manager. Okay, good manager have the knowledge, have some specific skills, so you can manage situation. So both are related to, to manage people, but management is related to the skills that you have, the knowledge that you have, so you can solve a situation. And leadership is more related to, to the vision, to inspire people, to uh, be working with people and have fun with them and make them feel happy with them. Let's read the second paragraph. Management is the oversight. Remember that that is like, like review and supervising. Management is the oversight of the tactical steps required to complete the work and achieve the objective. So here is it. So the, management, the manager supervises the steps that you do, the procedure, the process. So it's more in the administrative part. So Good managers excel, so it's a verb that comes from excellence. Good managers excel at articulating the steps required to complete tasks and holding people accountable for doing assigned work. So this is related to work. Right? Leaders can be good managers and good managers can be good leaders. Very often, managers are put into positions where they need to exhibit leadership characteristics, such as motivating and aligning employees to goals. So, yeah, both are related and it's very good if you are a leader and also a good partner. Likewise, anybody knows what is likewise? Could be equal. It could be like equal similarly something like that. so likewise leaders often must take or on management tasks such as holding employees accountable for an organization's goals and mission so there is a difference right uh leadership is more for inspiring and management is more for achieve the goals of the company uh, do you have any question or any pronunciation or word vocabulary Teacher, what means good manager, Excel? Yeah, Excel is a verb, and it comes from excellence. So, Excel means from excellence. Oh. Yeah. Una abreviación. No, it's the verb. Excel is a verb. Excellence is an adjective. ¿Y cómo lo dice en español? No existe. En español no existe. <laughs> 
Uh -huh. That does not exist in English. Yes. Uh, en, en, en español tenemos, lo que pasa es que, uh, I will explain you that one. Excellence, uh, ex, excelente, for example, in Spanish, comes in English, from excellence. And we use that in Spanish, uh, but we don't use the verb. The verb was never adapted. El verbo nunca se adaptó, solo el adjetivo. Eso pasa con muchas palabras, por ejemplo, Bluetooth. I mean, Bluetooth. Ustedes saben, todos sabemos que es Bluetooth, ¿verdad? pero no lo usamos en español. No decimos, encendamos el diente azul. No, so it's a word in English. Existe en inglés y le usamos lo mismo en español. Excel es una palabra, solo un verbo, solo en inglés. Pero en español no lo usamos. Good. Any other question? No more questions. Okay. So this is a very good uh, chart uh, that is explaining uh, the difference, right? Some specific difference between leaders and managers in the following sense. For the leaders, we establish a long-term vision, goals, and objectives. So that is like, like for the leaders, right? For the managers, achieve organizations, visions, goals, and objectives. So you can see the difference. In the first one, establish. So you analyze, you motivate, you encourage. In the managers, you, you are pushing people. You provide procedures. You provide um, tasks so they can do the actions, so they can achieve the vision, the goals, and objectives. And the next one says, Motivate and align employees to goals. So you motivate and you say, we need this because it's been important for the company or whatever. And the other one says, assign tasks to employees and hold them accountable. So you, uh, in, manage, in management, you say, you are going to do this for next Saturday. Go and do it. So that is to be a matter. Uh, on the other one says, ask long-term Big picture analytical questions such as what and why. So in this part, leaders are like, uh, in general, right? uh, the whole company. How do you want the company to work? And the other one for managers, ask process questions. Focus on achieving short-term objectives such as how and when. So in the other one, uh, it's going to be long-term, and this one is going to be no, uh, short term. And in the last one, it says, can have a title, though so often part of the C suit. Their positions and uh, responsibilities aren't always executive. The C suit is like the CEO uh, in positions like management at the top. In the other one, in managers, has specific job titles and fixed responsibilities. So this is what you have to do. So in the first one, it's like uh, motivate people, uh, encourage, and the other one, create a report, send emails. So that is the main thing. So, uh, and you can see here that it's very, very, you can see the differences between leaders and managers. So that is there, very, very obvious, right? So do you have any questions on any words or any uh, pronunciation word here? I have a question, yeah. but, but it, it's about the, the document. Can you share the document with us? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Tomorrow I will be sending you some screenshots yeah. uh, on the class yeah. so you can check it out. Alive. Thank you. Okay. Alive. Okay. Uh, any questions on the chart? Pronunciation questions? Or... Teacher, uh, what's meaning long term? Uh, long term, it means that, for example, in 10 years, that is a long term. In short mm -hmm. term, is in this year, in these three months, in this month. It's a, like uh, in Spanish, uh, largo plazo? Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. that will be. So in English, it's long term and short term. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Any other question?
The pronunciation is executive. 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 Any other questions? Okay, so let's continue. Hey, this is repeated. It's not the same. Okay, this is the other one. And then the question, now that we know that leadership is important, that uh, it's not the same to be a manager than to be a leader, the question is how to become a better leader. So Cecilia, could you please help us reading this slide? Okay. How to become a better leader? The workplace has changed dramatically over the last few years with the increase of remote work and the growing importance placed on employee touch points, such as diversity, equity, and inclusion. There are several leadership qualities that can be defined refined. refined to help individuals become better leaders, become more self-aware. Great leaders know their strengths, weakness, and weaknesses. weaknesses and effects on the people they lead. They set a good example and model good behavior. One way to become more self-aware is to seek feedback for those people. Very good. So what did you understand in your own words here? I am... Uh, who become a better leader is when you follow the things that the people are doing in the in the work and and develop the persons for for the people can growing in the activities. Okay, so some like that one, right? So yeah, there are things that we can develop so we can become a better leader. So it says the workplace has changed dramatically over the last few years uh, with the increase of remote work and uh, the growing importance placed on employee touch points. Uh, touch points, what is a touch point, my friends? Touch point. No hey, touch, uh, touch points are the way that you relate with other teams, with other people within the company. So there is a touch point. So the way that you relate with people. And this is such as diversity, that is very, very popular this day, equity and inclusion, okay? Uh, remember the pronunciation is equity, okay? There are several leadership qualities. What is several? Do you remember? Like many. Like many, very good. Yeah, so there are several leadership qualities that can be refined to help individuals become better leaders. Refine, what is refine? Okay, refine is when you have already the characteristic, you already have the skill, but you can polish that later. You can become better in that, that specific task. So that is refine. And the other one says, become more self-aware. Ah, that is a very good advice. And what is to become more self-aware? What do you understand on that? It is like a, you know about 
yourself and you are uh, yeah, sure. Very good. That is to become more self-aware. When you know who you are, what good things you have and bad things because nobody's perfect, right? So great leaders know their strengths. That is the good things and weaknesses that are the bad things and effects on the people they lead. So that is very, very important that you know yourself. They set a good example and model good behavior. Another important part. Right? One way to become more self-aware is to seek feedback from those people. So that is the best way for you to know yourself when you ask other people, hey, what do you think about the meeting that we had or what I did or the decision that I made? Uh, and when the people tell you, you know that you have to change some things or improve in other things. Any questions on this uh, slide? Pronunciation or vocabulary? Teacher, seek is like looking for. Very good. Yes, it's like looking for. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So let's see. This one is going to be for. Samantha. Not possible. Sol Mayanef. Um, okay. Refine communication skills. Leaders should be effective and clear in their communication. They must also be good listeners. Communication should be based in openness, honesty, and transparency. This involves setting clear goals and expectations and giving regular, regular feedback to employees. Connect between members. Connecting build trust, understanding, and bonds that are critical for successful leadership. The best leaders should get to know the personalities and capabilities of their team members. Okay, what did you understand here? These two, two skills. Uh, that the leaders, uh, they, they will have a good communication and they can be uh, able to listen to the people and uh, can be open to to talk with the people and and they have to uh, uh, have good communication with all their team Perfect, very good. So that is it. So the first one is refine communication skills. So yeah, all the leaders, we have uh, communication skills, but sometimes you can improve. Refine is like improve. So leaders should be effective. I mean, this is very important. Being effective is that you say something in, in short way, but everybody understands you. In clear, in their communication. They must also be good listeners. That is very important because Communication is not only saying, things, uh, it's also listen and reflect what people are saying. Communication should be based in openness, honesty, and transparency. This involves setting clear goals and expectations and giving regular feedback to employees. So I believe this is very clear. The other one says connect with team members. Oh, this is a very important part. Because when you connect with your co-workers, I mean, the trust is going to be there, right? Connection, what actually says that. Connection build trust. Understanding and bonds uh, that are critical for successful leadership. Bonds, what is bonds? Do you know what is bonds? No, James Bond, right? So that's a different one. Mm. Bond is like a link. When you have 
a relationship with somebody and you have a, a, a connection that is a bond. Okay. And then it says the best leaders should get to know the personalities and capabilities of their team members. So that would be it. Uh, any questions in here? Any pronunciation or vocabulary questions? Okay, so other two, this is going to be for, let's see, Lucy and Natalie. Not possible. Fatima, Denise. Encourage, oh, uh -huh. sorry. Go ahead, bye. Encourage growth. The best leaders encourage their own, their colleagues and their employees or followers, personal and professional growth. Encouraging growth, strengthens bonds and trust between leaders and team members and increases what teams can accomplish. Be open to change. Change is ine inevitable in business. Being open to it and encouraging new ideas and perspectives from team members can help leaders become more effective. Very good. What did you understand on this one? That are um, some characteristics for the best leaders. Um, you need to ground the, your strengths and to have a very good team members. Very good. So that is it. There are two here. So the first one is encourage growth. I believe this is very important to develop people, to develop all the person. So the best leaders encourage their own their colleagues and their employees or followers, personal and professional growth. So a good leader listens to you and tells you, you know, what you need to do is to study this and continue improving this. Encouraging growth strengthens bonds. So that, that is true. If you help other people to get a better position in the, in the work, of course, that person is going to trust in you and help you. Uh, and uh, trust between leaders and team members and increases what team can accomplish, definitely. So you will be able to accomplish more, to achieve more. Be open to change is another one that we mentioned before, right? Change is inevitable in business. So you cannot avoid that. Many things are going to change. So being open to it and encouraging new ideas and perspectives from team members can help leaders become more effective, definitely. So if you really help people to bring changes, innovate, the company is going to be better. Perfect. So, uh, any questions on this slide? Pronunciation questions or vocabulary questions? No questions, good. And I guess this are the last one. Okay, this is going to be for the check. Uh, Ivan Petrovic. Not possible. Uh, Sulma Janet. Not possible. Uh, Holman Saul. De develop, uh, develop positive attitudes, responding to negative situations, are problems, approaches, approaches, and encouragement, and, and approaches and Encouragement, encouragement is a great way to model and problem problem solving skills. Sec, 
out crowd Think. opportunities, great leaders. Uh, great leaders look for opportunities for continuous improvement and education. This can in this case involve in involve at, at, at attending attending huh? attending conference five finding mentor and finding a mentor and reading books on leadership. Okay, what did you understand in your words? I don't know what is what was the meaning of encouragement. Yeah, encouragement is to encourage. Uh, like when you cheat up somebody, when you say, "Come on, you can do it," so that is encouragement. It's like motivation. It's like motivation. Very good. Uh, um, uh, well, I think is is when when there there is a there are there is a problem, and it is bad. It's bad. The situation is it's difficult, but you 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 have to do it. You have it because if you have a a bad a bad situation, if you are bad, it's 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 not good because you have to you have positive. You have to motivate. The, the the person to to try try to to uh try to go doing the, the, the um sick oh group great leaders look of oh. Uh well, other uh is where you do meaning meaning for the the coworkers you you create, you you set a lot of good teams to 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 have a good uh for do a good a good work and have a good attitude and what do you what what, what uh, do you what can you do when you have a a problem and you have to motivate the person yeah. okay very good so that is it develop positive attitude so that is very good. uh yeah maybe the the co-workers the peers are not that uh responsible for example so you need to change that those little things responding to negative situations and problems with Positive approaches and encouragement is a great way to model and improve problem solving skills. So that is a very important part. Seek out growth opportunities. Great leaders look for opportunities for continuous improvement and education. This can involve attending conferences, finding a mentor, and reading books on leadership. So again, as you mentioned, everything that you say was clear. Uh, yeah, there are opportunities so you can look for people, all the team, all the company to to get all these opportunities. Uh, do you have any questions on this slide? Uh, what's meaning sick 
and the in the in the second one uh, paragraph seek, seek seek out yeah seek out is like looking for when you're searching but uh but uh because don't you say the the phrase depends the context um, I mean, no, I mean, the phrasal verb in this case, seek and seek out is the same. It's, it's the same. It's like look for or looking for. So it's going to be the same. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Very good. So another day, another dollar, my friends. So, uh, this is the class of tonight. Do you have any questions so far from the class of tonight? Okay, let's check the attendance then. Uh, be careful, my friends. I can tener cuidado ahí con los temblores porque estaba viendo que estaba temblando. So be careful. How do you say está temblando? Uh, is you can say it's a tremor or you can say it's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. Yeah. Tremor. Yeah. Uh, y cómo se dice cuidado? Algo así. Be careful. Mm, be careful es cuando yo me despido y usted le digo, be careful. Pero si yo quiero decir cuidado con algo es watch out. Watch out. Watch, watch out. out. It's like be cautious about something. Okay. Just be careful on that. Uh, let's check attendance. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Teacher, but a, a tremor dijo. Tremor. Tremor, no, Tremor. equal the airport. It's very small. Tremor is very small. Airquake is something, uh -huh. the one that has happened. Yeah. Very good. Thank okay. you. Okay, it's a pleasure. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Daniel Alquimedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Very good. Um, David, uh, I'm sorry. Erica Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Very good. Fatima Denise Aguilar Marquez. Present teacher. Good. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. Present. Good. Hector Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Ivan Petrovich Guzman Aquino. Present. Good. Uh, Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfara. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. José Alberto Baños <laughs> Hernández. Ah, ok. Present. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenya Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Ah, ok. Ah, ok. Got you, Manuel. Nelson Antonio Erroda Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Surma Yanet Ramírez Sábados. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Present. Good. So, the one one for today is for Christian and my friends. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Have a wonderful night. Be careful with the earthquakes, okay? And I hope nothing bad happens. And uh, see you tomorrow. Dream in English. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.